Welcome to Inside Tracks, a revealing look at the backstories behind some of your favorite recordings. I'm your host, Mike Botts, and our guest this show is singer, songwriter, producer, artist, and longtime close friend of mine, Andrew Gold. When I first met Andrew, I was made aware that he had worked with Linda Ronstadt on a single that was a huge hit for her, a big breakthrough, and that was You're No Good. You're No Good was written right before you joined the band. As that's you right. Recall. We had a, a, in fact, that's one of the reasons that I ended up playing drums, because all of our drummers, until you, were so bad, <laughs> including a couple of them that sort of tried to, would, would get so drunk and try to drive the bus away from the, the uh, truck stop while everybody's still inside. There was all kinds of stuff, and we said we got to get a drummer that wasn't crazy, and we got you, which was a total big you mistake. Were, yeah. Yeah. He was crazy, but he drummer, actually but played pretty good. You yeah. were a good, yeah. I was the one. I was the one that said, said "Linda, you got to get this guy." Back. But everybody else agreed with me. So you owe me your life. You're no good. Was actually so I ended up playing drums because we didn't have a decent drummer, mm-hmm. and I don't know why they thought, well, we can't find a decent drummer in L.A. <laughs> so what is he, Andrew, who doesn't normally play? It doesn't quite make sense. But Peter was Peter Asher, the producer, was comfortable. So it was Kenny on bass, mm-hmm. Kenny Edwards, Ed right? Black, yeah, uh, a guitarist with Linda at the time, mm-hmm. playing a sort of rhythm thing, and uh, me playing some borrowed drums. I borrowed it from a guy named Gene. Um, Gene Garfin was in our band with me and Kenny. Well, I'm sure we all remember Gene yeah. Garfin. Yes. It's not so, size no, but that really, these were, bar- these were borrowed drums. Borrowed okay. drums. It just was like a little now, sort of a candy cane. Now, when set. you cut the basic track, did you. Were you playing drums I first? I played drums. Okay, then you added all I played in. drums in kind of a pseudo Motown thing. And we left a big section in the middle, 16 bars, I think it was, uh, with just with the sort of. Uh, reggae beat because we had no idea what we were going to put there we really didn't so we just left it and then I sort of kind of played along and kind of built it up a little bit but then we didn't know what we were going to do in the end we just repeated that then afterwards I started putting on the keyboards which were uh, like uh, you know this uh, Fender I mean a a Wurlitzer like the old Wurlitzer yeah Yeah. Wurlitzer we sort of uh, did two tracks that one octave higher than the other and then we put the uh, more guitars on and then we said, okay, now we've got to address this issue of this middle section. So Peter Asher and Val Gray and I stayed up one night, fairly late as I recall, doing this solo, which was just sort of this double-tracked George Harrison-like thing, which is... One of my favorites. Which yeah. was my want in those days <laughs> and still today. <laughs> it's good to see I've grown. Anyway, um, so we did this whole thing, and then we did a thing at the end, which was a... Uh, originally it was the, the solo was through an amp uh, it was like a Fender amp and I had uh, borrowed Linda's black Strat which was a 62 I remember it Strat well. yes. and we just double tracked it and, I, and then I did a little solo on top of the little do 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 and it's funny because I'm, I'm sort of jumping ahead but uh, a few weeks later Val Gray right before he mixed it erased the first do 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 on one of the tracks oh, no. and everybody's going oh my god this it's is you know, forever, he's fired right? yeah. and what he did was uh just took the second lick which was the same as the first on the on the same track and flew it in but it's manual it was just like try to start the machines at the same time and just do it until you get it right yeah nowadays cool. you could cut and yeah paste. pro tools you yeah. cut and paste and matter of fact you could just press undo <laughs> <laughs> and the eraser would be over yeah, wouldn't that be so, nice then huh so we did the uh the end of it and we had this old uh german emt it was a disc that was like an echoplex, but it was actually a little tape disc. But it was warped. It was actually sort of broken. But it created kind of a subtle chorus effect. One of those fortunate yeah, accidents. Yeah, it was just one uh, of these things. And we all went, oh, you know, because back then it was like, we go, sound. can we have that? That's great. We like that. You know, it's broken. And Peter would say, no, that's great. And Val would go, but it's, it's, there's something wrong but with technically, it. it's yeah, technically, right. it's not right. <laughs> Who cares? So, um... We uh, did that, and then we were all happy. You know, as I went home, two o'clock in the morning, three a.m. So the next day, mm-hmm. uh, I came in a little. I slept late, and I came in, and we were starting at one o'clock or something. So I came in about three, and Linda had been there at one. She hadn't heard, and she had no idea what we were going to do. She heard it and said, "What the hell is all this sort of Beatles stuff all over this?" 
you know, this track. Well, you there's know, a definite would, Beatle influence. Yeah, you can't deny but, it. And, you know, and, and, and it was the first time that she'd heard me sort of go to town on this thing. So at first yeah. she thought, wow, this is kind of too much. And she didn't like it at first. And Peter was trying to convince her, you know, just give it a chance, you know. And then she heard it about five or six times. And then she went, you know what, I, I, it is really good. So they were going, boy, you're, you're, it's good you're late. You didn't have to live through that. That was like the biggest like shocker. That, to me, was a major breakthrough record for not only Linda, but for you as an artist. I you, was, that was the first time you got a chance to actually make Andrew Gold's statement. That's right. Well, but it's funny because I was listening. The first, this was one of my first ever experiences of hearing something I'd done. Uh, I heard it on the radio one, uh, you know, when I was driving along in my little Toyota that was, you know, with bashed windows and Indes- dented. It's an indescribable feeling, oh, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> just like I went, oh my God, this is the record that we did. This is me. And at the end of it, the disc jockey said, "Who? I've got to find out who is this guitar player on this thing. It's so great because I... I you know, and he, he mm-hmm. kind of shuffled some papers, and then he said, "Oh, this guy Andrew Gold is the guy." He mentioned my name, and I just, I died in my dad. I, just, I had to pull off to the side of the road. No, it was great. Sorry. Feeling better now that we're through. Feeling better. exciting record for me to work on and that was the first time that I I think you and I kind of musically bonded on yeah. on your music we weren't just hired hands in Linda's band or something no, and that was a real an exciting band record and that was man that was your breakthrough record so yeah if if you can just do it from what inspired you to write it well, through our rehearsals right on through and I think everybody would love to hear it yeah, a Lonely Boy was a, originally, I wrote this on the piano, and the bridge was a very soft thing. Goodbye, mama. Mm-hmm. 
Anyway, that's how I brought it into the rehearsal. But when I was writing it, I thought, well, this is going to be like a one of these 20 minute singles. But they, it wasn't, I didn't know what I was really writing about, you know, in, in any particular way. After three minutes, I got bored. I went, you know, that's it. That's enough. Yeah, you know, it's just kind of some weird sibling rivalry thing. <laughs> we went into rehearsal, which was really a real band situation well, that, at that point with Linda's band, which that was, was you. what, about 70, 75, no, 75, 75? Or maybe end of 75, 76. Yeah. yeah. And we were touring a lot with Linda, and I was opening up um, for Linda. It was Mike Watts, yourself. Yeah, and there was, uh, I believe it was Waddy Wachtel, you. Waddy Wachtel, Dan Kenny Dudmore, Edwards. Kenny Edwards, yeah. and Brock Walsh. Yeah, killer band. And and we were touring a lot, so we would record in between the tours, basically. Mm -hmm. The main contributors in the band, you and Waddy, were particularly... Um, Influential Obnoxious? about <laughs> yeah, well that too. But <laughs> you used to play Led Zeppelin stuff in the back of the bus all the time, which I loved. And I grew to I, I listen to that now, and I just I can smell the uh, back of the bus. Anyway, <laughs> uh, you it brought was a, a piece was, of the bus home. With it you. was a fun time. It was a really fun time. But in the in the rehearsals, you were kind of organizing the whole drum part, which is a very big part of it, mm -hmm. especially how it starts, because I had gone like. Like da 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 or one do do mm -hmm. do do, but later on people were saying, you know, if you don't know that, that that's one, you can't tell where one is until the drums come in. They they get down playing the four, mm -hmm. and I went, oh, I see. It sounds like one two right? three four da 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 da. da, 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 da sounds da, corny da, when like, it's flipped over like yeah, that. Yeah, and then you know, then you, then when the drums come in, you're going, what is happening? <laughs> And then Wadi and you, uh, and I think Kenny agreed or whatever it was, said, you know, instead of this quiet bridge, why don't we kick it up enough? Let's, let's rock and roll. And so it completely changed the bridge to this sort of solo. I could add the little goodbye mamas and stuff as asides and stuff, and Wadi played a solo, and you were playing just heavy <laughs> duty drum stuff, and it was great. And we cut the song, and Peter said, you know, I've heard you guys play this live, because we played it live in, in the show. And I think you can do it better. And we went out for another month on a tour and played it some more. And we used to get standing ovations in the middle of the song because it was very exciting, even though we were still going. You know, it was like, <laughs> and, and so we knew we had something. So we went and cut it twice. I would give anything to hear the first version. That record was more or less live. The strings were added later. So we cut the song again, and that was the one that was released.
thank you for being a friend. Yeah. Thank you. That's a cool song. Thank you for being a friend. The, it was sort of a studio band. I remember we had the late uh, Jeff Picaro playing drums. Oh, he did Wonderful 40 drummer. takes of that. 40 takes. I mean, a lot of them were false starts. But well, it sounds like the old, old days it was the when old they had two-track yeah. recording in LA. Now we just know. do one take and just fix it. Um, no, we did 40 takes because I wanted it to sound just like a the rhythm to be way. just, you know, and I remember... I think I was getting glared at by Jeff Picaro. Not to mention the fact that it can be told that the vocal on that record was a rough vocal I did at about 5.30 in the afternoon just to, uh, to have a rough vocal. And I could never improve upon it. So mm -hmm. we, we redid the bridge because it was out of tune. But <laughs> the, um, the song took about an hour, hour to write. Mm -hmm. And it was just this little throwaway thing. And then we made this really good record of it. And then years later, in the mid-'80s, you know the girl from uh, Maud, B. Arthur. She's got a new TV show. Wally called me up and said they wanted to use this song, Thank You for Being a Friend, recorded in a simple version that they just did with the studio mm -hmm. singer mm -hmm. um, for this show called The Golden Girls. It was no big thing. And then I came back about three or four months later, and the show was out, and it was top ten. Thank you for being a friend Travel down a road and back again your heart is true, you're a pal and a confidant I'm not ashamed to say I hope it always will stay this way My hat is off, won't you stand up and take a bow for being a friend. I want to thank you. Thank you for being
a little bit unique in the way we made records back then because we decided to do it totally live, which was Linda's vocal was a keeper. We did the background vocals, which was Kenny and I singing, I believe, as we were cutting the track. If I recall right, Linda was the one that was saying that she wanted to do it the oh, way it Buddy Holly would have done it. She was the one that kind That's of brought great. the idea up to yeah, us. Yeah, she even did a little clap like, ah, it'll be the day. That's and then right. they had a little uh, the, slap echo. The, yeah. Uh, it was kind of neat because I sort of felt like, oh, this is like the Beatles would have, you know, again with the Beatles. Yeah. Oh, this is how they would have cut it, you know, in their early, early albums and stuff. And so we had our little microphones and we did it, I believe, in one take. This is what I've that's, heard. That's I right. Don't I don't remember attest. much about I will anything to that. <laughs> past 1991. <laughs> but uh, it was one take. Because the one thing I do remember about that session was I was amazed that you and Kenny were going to be in the vocal ISA booth and not only sing the backgrounds, but be playing your be instruments playing at the same time. And I the thought, only thing that was overdubbed This in is that. how Buddy Holly would have had to do it. We did you know? overdub. The, Waddy and I traded a solo. He, he played the first part of the solo mm-hmm. and played the second. Because we had rehearsed at SIR before doing it. And when we did the first take, we went in and we listened, and none of us really could believe it. So we said, "Oh, we got another one. I'm sure we got a better one in this." We might and have another one. We did, it, we did it two more times, mm. and it just used the first day. Yeah, I mean, it was. Obvious. No, that was great. It was it, that. That was a number one hit for her. Yeah, uh, she had. I mean, this was during the the period where we had just sort of started to have hit after hit after hit. Way. That'll be the day when you say goodbye. That'll be the day when you make me cry. You say you're gonna leave me. You know it's a lie, cause that'll be the day when I die. Well, that'll be the day. That is one of my favorites, ah, and it's also are. the only one that uh, it's a rarity. has me recorded doing a drum solo. That's and it's a song that unfortunately didn't get on your last album, Whirlwind. That's and, right. Uh, it's my last solo album in the seventies. It's the In Crowd. Yeah, it's a great track. It's it's basically you, me, and uh, Brian uh, Brian Garofalo. Brian Garofalo. Right? The reason I bring this up because of the, and I call it up on mod is that this has never been released. So this is going to be like a one-time thing. This is from our personal vault here. Uh, the whole album, Whirlwind, was me 
uh, rightly or wrongly trying to answer critics that said I, I was kind of too mild-mannered and kind of easygoing. And it was a lot harder edge. We decided consciously to get a much more live drum sound. And it was just the three of us. Th throughout the album, the, all the tracks were pretty much done with you, me, and Ryan. And we had this song in crowd. I, for some reason, decided that it would be great to do a, a rock version. Maybe we'd been fooling around in a rehearsal or a jam or something. We added an overdub, uh, two overdubs. One was a sort of piano, which was a total ripoff from We Love You by The Stones. And the other thing was us the three of us singing the backgrounds, which are all unison yelling. And it was a lot of fun. I mean, and, and there's a very, and there's a funny intro because you had done something very funny and I kept that in there. And then we cut the track and we did the record in a kind of an interesting sort of Brian Wilson way in that we cut sections of the instrumental, which was just basically on A, but various versions of the groove. One was quiet, one was this drum solo thing, which is still one of my favorite. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a lot of room in those records because there was not that much, yeah, not much uh, other stuff, so you got to yeah. get the drums real big and stuff. And everybody had been playing very dead kind of sounding stuff, especially in Southern California. Wow, I must have really nicked it bad. It split right in half, man. <laughs>
well, we're moving right along, and now as as long as we've played in crowd and gotten that little bon mot of unreleased history, there was a an ill-fated band that you and I had put together. Yeah, it was actually originally called the name of your dog, Houdini. That's, That's correct, right. and actually, which is a good name, but we decided to change it to the last second to Yanks. I think it was because the lawyers told us we could be sued. Oh, I think there was another. <laughs> There's an R and B yes. band named Houdini at the time. There was another band different called spelling, Houdini. but That's you right. know, it was you and me and a guy named Alan Graham who was very talented. Ken Scott, the famous engineer who did uh, all the uh, Super Tramp, Super Tramp, and he and did he the did Beatles, David White Bowie, albums, yeah. did, uh, David Bowie, and he did. Um, Missing Persons. Missing Persons, right. Yeah, yeah. And so um, Ken and his wife, who were sort of a, a managing team as well, lived in Hollywood. They, they heard us and they heard our songs and they really thought, great. So they brought us in the studio and we did three songs there and we had four songs from our uh, little the demo, home, demo, home yeah. stuff. And uh, that's what, and we did a photo session. That was it. <laughs> it was our career. Um, but there but are we some, did some good music. Yeah, amazing them. tracks, which will probably never see the light of day. Father, children? Yes. Well, that takes care of question number one. <laughs> no. <laughs> question number one. Give me five major musical influences on you. Yeah, they're all, they will date me severely, but That's really okay. some of my favorite music. Beatles, probably be number one. I the Beach it. Boys mm -hmm. during the 60s and part of the 70s were, mm -hmm. especially in the later part of the 60s for the Beach Boys. I really enjoyed... Pet Sounds. Them. Yeah, Pet Sounds. Yeah. Uh, the Birds, big, big influence on me. The original five albums, the original five members. Yeah. Really, that was a big influence on me. Even though it doesn't show it, Bob Dylan and Barry Gordy's company Motown. Motown is <laughs> a big influence. So those are the... That'd be the five. I mean, those are the five, but... Really, you'd have to add a, a lot of classical music in there, movie mm -hmm. music. <laughs> no, nah, this was fun. This was really fun. Well, good. Well, one more question then. Okay. You're on a desert island, island. but <laughs> <laughs> you can only have three albums. What would you take? Um, well, probably Pet Sounds would have to be one. 
maybe Rubber Soul, one of my favorite Beatles albums. Mm-hmm. Um, a compilation of all Birds and Beach Boys albums and, and classical De- and Debussy album. Something by Gershwin or maybe the West Side Story, the score of that is uh, mm-hmm. one of my favorite bits of music. Well, thank you very much. Well, it's great it's really to been be a, your It's guest been fun, and, and I had a great time, and I'm sure the audience wonderful was, 2,000 years. <laughs> yes, right. You've been a great civilization, <laughs> and I can just only say, keep a smile on your face, and eat a, ten, eat a nectarine. It's the greatest food ever made. <laughs> and with that, good night. <laughs> it's time. Put on your Yeah, solution. don't you know it's time. Put on your solution. Oh, oh, it's time. Put on your sailing shoes. Time to cast off and sail away. Thank you.